cried some bitter tears, but I felt his arms around me as I faced my darkest fears. See, I've had more gains than losses, and I've known more joy than hurt, as his grace fell down upon me undeserved.
Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Amen. we got something to praise Him for today. I want to praise Him that He's good. I want to praise Him that He's in control. I want to praise Him that He knows every need that we have. Amen. I want to praise Him. He's the Savior of the world. And bless His wonderful, wonderful name. I just, I want to praise Him. Amen. Uh, when you think about Mother's Day, it's a time to remember uh, those who have lost uh, a mother and uh, uh, hopefully has gone on to glory where one day you can be together again. What a day that's going to be. Amen. It's also a time when people come with sadness because mother's gone. It's also a time when people come rejoicing because they have a mother who has uh, led them through life and uh, hopefully led them in the ways of the Lord. Amen? There's also that time that comes with hope that uh, if you're here today and your mother don't know the Lord, that you can pray and trust God to work in their lives and, uh, and that God can fill their lives with His presence. When you go and you begin to think about everything about this world, sometimes it is good, sometimes it's bad. Amen? Oh, but when you think about who Jesus is, <laughs> He's more than wonderful. Oh, bless His name today. Thank God for His goodness. Thank Him for being so good to us and the opportunity to worship Him. I want to ask you, if you will, all over the building this morning, if you're physically able, let's just stand together in a word of thanksgiving and praise unto the Lord and give Him, give God praise for all that the Lord is doing in our lives and thank Him for just speaking His word uh, this morning into our life through song uh, that we may uh, worship Him and honor Him. I want to tell our children, ages 2 to 6, if you would like to go to Children's Church, be meeting in the foyer to sign them up uh, right uh, as we fellowship, as the choir comes down, and we want to give God thanksgiving for all that God is doing. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. God, thank you this morning. God, that we can come and just worship You and praise You and honor You, God. That You are a God who knows what we need. Lord, that You know our hearts, our lives. And Lord, just like in this place this morning, thank You for Your presence, God. Lord, thank You for allowing us just to look at You and know You. And Lord, thank You that You, God, are our Redeemer, our Savior. That one day You came to where we were. And we understand, God, that You are that wonderful Savior. God, that Your name is more than wonderful because You are able to pick us up. How the out of the clay of sin, Lord, and change our life from the inside out and give us new life every single day. And I want to praise You that Your mercy is renewed every day. Father, only You know every need that's in this building this morning. God, there's those that are here with a, a, a life that is seeking uh, something that is real, seeking uh, that significant for uh, their life. Lord, I pray that You Lord, would just open their eyes and their heart. They would trust in You as Savior and Lord and feel that void that has been in their life for so many years. Lord, I pray... God, God, right now, you would just touch those who may have come in this morning, God, with sin in their life or with addictions in their life. God, we pray you would just set them free. Father, those who are carrying burdens, Lord, thank you that you promised you're the burden bearer. And God, you're able to carry every burden as you did carry everything to the cross. Lord, and you died for our sins. And Lord, thank you that you rose again on the third day. And this morning we come to celebrate who you are. Father, I pray for every church in our community, in our county, and Lord, throughout the nation today and around the world, God, as we meet together, Lord, may May there be a true awakening in our lives, in our nation, Lord, to who You are and what You want to do in our lives. We give You praise. Lord, we give You honor and glory. We thank You this morning, God, for our, our mothers. So I thank You for bringing us into this world so that we can hear and know about You. And God, we want to praise You for all that You're doing. May Your will be done in our lives together. And we give You thanksgiving and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome someone this morning to the house of the Lord. Turn around and let them know you're glad to see them in God's house. We worship together. Amen.
thank you so much. You can be seated. It is so good this morning to see you in the house of the Lord. I know we have uh, a lot of uh, people that are out going to church with their mothers, and what a blessing that is, uh, and uh, uh, and others that have come today because of your mother. So thank you uh, for being in the house of the Lord, and we just give praise uh, for all that God is doing. Uh, I was always in church because of my mama. Amen. Uh, and I praise the Lord for that. Uh, my, my mom and dad uh, took me to church all my life, and I praise the Lord uh, for them and uh, just thank God for His goodness. So we also want to honor a special mother that is here uh, this uh, uh, this morning, and uh, that is our uh, the mother, uh, our oldest mother. And so uh, if you are over 120, will you please raise your hand? All right. Amen. Okay. All right. Do we have, do we have a mother? 90... Uh, 95 and up. Anybody 95 and up? All right. You have to raise their hand high if you do. 94, 93, 92, 91. Oh, we have 91. Praise the Lord. Amen. Miss Bernice. Uh, what a, what a blessing, and uh, we praise the Lord for you, and we have we have a special flower for you. We're going to carry it back there to you in just a minute, so uh, Miss Bernice Witherspoon, she is such a blessing, and uh, just praise the Lord for her, and uh, I know uh, a lot of her family is here, so thank you for being here with her. Uh, she is all the way back here in the back, and uh, we thank God for her faithfulness uh, to the Lord and to the church. Uh, she is uh, one of these prayer warriors always uh, that's always just trusting and serving the Lord, so thank God for that, and uh, we just want to ask the Lord will to be done and God to bless her and lift her up and uh, so thank you for being in the Lord's house this morning so oh you're coming to get the flower okay praise the Lord all right this time I asked sister Lana to come and she's going to sing uh, this morning and uh, just thank the Lord for being so good we got a lot to worship him for amen look at somebody and say God's been good to me amen he is so good praise the Lord Well, I want to thank the Lord for saving me, and He has been very good to me. Um, I was thinking about that song that we just sung. Um, before I was saved, for years, I was in the world seeking something that needed to be filled in my heart. And um, it wasn't until I met the Lord, until that need was met, and I just thank the Lord so much for making that change in my life and um, just for His forgiveness and making me new. Um, I was 31 years old before I became um, saved, and He made me a new mama. And I just thank the Lord so much for what He's done in my life. My days are filled with laughter My heart has known your peace I've traveled far, still there is far to go Cause in my heart there is a longing To look upon your face Where you are is where I want to be you are my king you are the lamb lion of judah seed of abraham the holy one god's only son you are the king of who I am. Every road I've traveled down, 
You have walked before me. You made the light to shine out of darkness. I'm looking for the day when I bow before you. Lay my crown at your feet. You are my King. You are the Lamb, Lion of Judah, Seed of Abraham. And thank God uh, this morning for His wonderful love and grace uh, and His mercy. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord. Uh, we have a, a special testimony. Sister Bernice uh, said she, she, wanted to, she wanted to give a testimony this morning. What a blessing. Amen. Amen. Wow. God bless you. Mm. Amen. 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 What a blessing. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. What a wonderful blessing, and uh, thank you, sister, for being so uh, always faithful and encouraging, and what a, what a wonderful blessing and uh, a legacy that you have of serving the Lord, and we want to give God thanksgiving. If you will, take your Bibles this morning and turn to the book of Titus uh, in the New Testament, as we have been going through a different book of the Bible every Sunday morning for, uh, uh, since last January. Uh, so thank you for taking this journey that we've been doing all the way through the Bible, and uh, we, we praise the Lord for uh, his word that God gives us every day. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, it is through his word that we get faith that don't just come out of thin air. Uh, God gives us his word so that we can understand and know him and trust him. Uh, and then through that word uh, that our lives are transformed and we uh, are changed uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit as we trust him as Savior and Lord. Uh, and I, I love this little book of, Tim, uh, of Titus. It has uh, uh, just three uh, chapters. And as we go through these three chapters, it is like uh, one of those wow factors. Like, God, you have said so much. It's like dynamite. It comes in small packages, but it does great big things. Amen. Uh, so how many of you know dynamite does a lot of damage? Praise the Lord. Uh, it also can clear things out and it can change direction of things. That's what the Word does. Matter of fact, we looked at that a little bit last week. His Word is power. Amen. Uh, he says it in the book of Romans that His Word uh, is that power that saves us, changes us, and gives us new life. And so when you look in the book of Titus, uh, this book is going to have one of those uh, titles to it as we uh, look at it. And you're going to say, oh, wow. Y'all know what I mean? It's a book of maintenance. See? Oh, wow. 
Titus is one of these books where uh, God just summed up a lot of things that is going on, and not only in the life of Titus, but also how they should be living out where they are every single day and having a life that is consistent, not up and down, not full of faith one day and no faith the next day, but a, a life that understands that you can live a real life in a real world with a real Savior. How many of you believe that today? Amen. That is our motto as a, as a church. We have a real life. Uh, we are living real life today. Uh, we have a real Savior who's able to help us through that life. Uh, and I, I'm glad today that He fills us with that love uh, that He has. So uh, you look at Titus. It is one of those books where uh, God just begins to speak into our life and show us how uh, that life really should uh, be done. So many times you go through life and you're wondering, I, I just wish I had an instruction manual to get me through where I am to show me which direction to go. And so God heard that and he gave you a whole entire book. It's called the Bible. Amen. It's our instruction book uh, for living. Not only uh, will it show you how to live, it'll show you how not to live. Amen. And so Titus is one of those uh, books. We have the author, the one who God used to pin it down. Uh, was Paul the Apostle. That's found in verse uh, number 1 of chapter 1. Uh, the next thing is this. It was written to a person. Uh, now, when you read through the Bible, many times, as we've looked already in the New Testament, it was written to churches or to believers in a whole place. Well, this is written to a person, just like First and Second Timothy was written to Timothy. Uh, now we, are, we have a book that is written to a man by the name of Titus. And we're going to look at his name in just a few minutes and who he is. But when you come to verse number, or chapter 1 and verse number 4, it tells us that he is writing to his dearly beloved son, uh, Titus. How did Paul have all of these sons? It is people that he has personally won to the Lord, personally is raising up, personally is leading through life uh, to a closer walk with God. It was written between 64 and 65 A.D., a time when Paul uh, was actually freed uh, from uh, prison and he uh, for his faith in Christ. And so uh, you watch as God uses him to minister, not only as he has been in prison because of his faith, uh, but also at a time when he is set free and he is moving and Paul is traveling many miles. God is speaking to him and giving him uh, this word for uh, Titus. Uh, there's a few things when you think about the purpose of this book in these three chapters, there's, uh, there's a lot of things that are going on. Uh, first, it was to set things in order order. Can I tell you, uh, whenever these people who have just come to faith in Christ, uh, this is a new air in their life. It's, it, they've been transformed. Uh, it is just like taking a, a, a small baby and saying to that small baby, okay, you are born, now you just go out and live life. Will we do that? No, these Christians, believers, they were in that same place. They don't have a lot of, uh, of teaching. They don't know a lot of things. Most of these have no, uh, no background in the law of God. And so uh, they are just learning. So what God did uh, with Titus was he used Titus uh, to be that one to lead them how they needed to live. Also, it was to ordain elders because they understood uh, that in the church there at Crete that they needed uh, those to lead, those who could, uh, who could be those spiritual leaders in life, uh, to show them how uh, to live life. Also, it was to instruct uh, the church, to lead them how to be the church upon earth. Now, when I say church, I am not just talking about a building. I'm not just talking about people that meet together in a building. I'm talking about the body of Christ. As you know today, if you are saved, you are the church. Amen. And so here he is given that instruction also was to teach them about grace. They were trying to take all these words and say, as long as you do all these things and you believe that hey, you're going to be OK, rather than just saying an understanding that God's grace has no works in it whatsoever. It is because we are a born again believer. We are saved that then we begin to live out that life. Also, that purpose was to show the real life that they are supposed to be living. Christians, I want to tell you something today. If you're a Christian in here today, would you say amen? amen? We are not supposed to be living in holes. We are not just supposed to be living behind the doors of the church. We are to be living a real life in a real world because we have a real Savior. And so he said, look, here's how you really live. You live your life so that Christ can be seen and use you right where you are. The theme is very simple. It was the godly life 
of the believer. How to live a godly life. And it's found in these three chapters. There's some key verses, and I love these key verses. This in Titus 2 and verse number 11, down through verse number 14, where Titus begins to let us know that it's, it's the grace of God. Look at verse number 11. I love this verse of Scripture. Chapter 2, verse number 11. He said, For, there in verse number 11, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Wow. You say, how is that possible? Romans chapter 1 will tell you that, so you go look at it. It is possible that everybody in the whole entire world can know Christ and know who He is. His grace, His presence, His favor has appeared to all. His salvation so that all of us can know Him as Savior and Lord. There's some key words. It was sound. The word sound itself is found five times. It is talking about sound doctrine, sound speech. It is also talking about sound of faith in our life. The word good was also a word that is found over and over in the book of Titus. And he's talking about good uh, works that we do. But he's also talking about good of God being good and the good things that God has done in our life. And he's talking about those works that we are to have. Did you know today, faith without works, what is it? Dead. And so what God does through our works, through our life, through our daily life every single day, is He uh, He brings on our faith to life, but we live out that faith through the things that we do, the life uh, that we live. And so Titus, he is the one that God is using to guide uh, this, uh, uh, if you will, this ship of Crete uh, through life and say, look, I want you to know that what you do matters and what you are doing with your life every single day. It matters. You touch people's lives in ways that they can never I imagine with the grace and the mercy of God. The name Titus itself is a, it is, it is of Latin origin. We understand a lot about Titus. It means also, it talks about a young man who is a, a Christian. It was a Christian name. And so Paul talks about Titus and Titus, like Timothy, is a young man. Can I just say today, living for God does not have any age on it. It is when you and I know Christ as Savior and Lord that we begin to live this journey. So here is Titus, who we understand is a young man, how that God is sent to a place called Crete, and he is there leading these believers in how to live their life and what to do with their life and how to be how to be that godly example that he talked about all through the word and so he was a very helpful man to the apostle paul he he lived for god he was there to encourage him titus is not mentioned in the book of acts like timothy was and like some of the others but he's he has mentioned about being in crete and that he is there to carry on the work that god had through the apostle paul he is frequently mentioned through the other epistles and so you find Titus had a had a reputation. He had a life that was lived that that made a mark in the world and made a mark with others as he lived that life. By the way, Titus he is a Gentile. He is Greek by birth, and so he has been sent by Paul on a, on a number of important missions to go and to carry the word and to check on these who are believers. Titus met Paul at Troas with uh, with the with what was going on in Corinth uh, that brought to that place to where uh, Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. Also, Titus was the one that carried Second Corinthians back to the church at Corinth of the news of good hope of the news of what God was doing in their life. Titus was uh, was at Rome uh, during Paul's second missionary uh, journey and imprisonment, uh, where he had uh, where he had then traveled with Paul to carry the gospel. I love what it says in Second uh, Corinthians chapter three, uh, chapter eight, and verse number twenty three. Paul said that Titus is my partner. He said that Titus is a fellow helper concerning you. Paul said, I wanted you to know Titus has benefit for you. He is there to encourage you and to lift you up. Can I just tell you something today? We should have people in our life that are living that kind of life. Those encouragers, those fellow helpers, those partners. Y'all do know something today, don't you? We cannot make it on our own. Look at somebody and say, I can't make it. Now tell them, give me $10. I don't know what that's about. It just come out. Amen. When you look, we have got to have each other. Aren't you glad for those that God puts in your life to encourage you along the way? Man, sometimes somebody just come by and say, I just want you to know I'm praying for you. You go, wow. 
Somebody comes by with that word of encouragement that you just needed right at that very second. It's like, wow. God knows exactly what we need when we need it. Oh, and I want to tell you, God knows today. Listen, He puts people in our lives just like Titus to be that encourager, to help us. Sometimes that encouragement is to correct us. Y'all do know the best correction we can ever have is from a friend, right? The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, we are the iron sharpening iron. We're that encourager for one another. And so Titus, he, ha- he is that for Paul, that encourager for him. Paul was a, or Titus was a worker for the cause of Christ. Matter of fact, God, he used Titus because of his ability to be used. <laughs> Can I just, I, I want to break something in on y'all right now. Do you know something in life? If you're going to be an NBA basketball star, you got to have some ability. Is that right? Y'all good with that? I mean, I'll be really honest with you. Today, if I went down to the Charlotte Hornets and said, uh, by the way, next year I just want to be on your team. Why y'all laughing at? They would know, number one, that I have no ability. They can look at me and see that I am not going to be slam dunking. And my feet are not going to be jumping over to go ball goal. I ain't tall enough. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. But that's not so in the family of God. God does not necessarily need our abilities. He uses our abilities. But God just needs us to be useful. Just be willing. Hey, by the way, I heard Brother Dan. Wasn't it good to see Dan standing in the choir? That's a miracle, amen? Praise the Lord. Can I just tell you something today? In our life, just be willing. Titus was one of these guys that was willing to say, okay, did he know how to go to Crete and how to fix everything that's going on in Crete with all these people and guide them? No, we we know he didn't. He is a young man. He's not walked many paths that they have walked. But he had the Holy Spirit in him. And God could lead him. And God could lead through him to touch their lives. And so, just be willing. God, I want to be that willing vessel. And so, Titus, he is a willing vessel. Titus has left uh, for Crete a little island in the Mediterranean Sea. And you watch as God uh, begins to work through their lives. It is near Greece. He he went to establish and to regulate uh, the church that is there to encourage encourage those believers to be that encourager to them. When these, when those churches, they were established through the Apostle Paul. But it's not exactly known when it, when it was. But we do have a reference in the book of Acts where he goes to Crete and you watch their lives change. Titus has been left to finish Paul's work. I want to ask you something today. Whose work are you left to finish? What kind of purpose, what kind of path do you have in your life? What is, what is that work that God has for you that you are, and only you can do? I want to tell you, I know people used to say, oh, somebody else will take your place. No one else can take your place. You are special to God. God knows who you are. He knows what you need. God knows how to lift you up and God knows how to meet your need. And so listen, I want to tell you that you have a purpose in life. And Titus's purpose was to step in where the Apostle Paul was. Real quick, there's a, uh, these three chapters are, are, are about very simple things. First of all, it was church organization. It was how, how that they needed to live and, and to have the leaders that they needed to lead them to where they needed to be. How we understood last uh, Sunday in 2 Timothy Timothy, that how we are all like sheep. We need that shepherd. We need that leader. We need someone in our life how we look up to. But at the same time, we need to understand that we also are leading someone. You do know we're leading someone somewhere, right? You are leading someone in life. That, that organization, you need that leader uh, in your life. The second chapter was simply about uh, that church uh, orientation of, of the age uh, that, that must teach the younger. Those who have been through uh, the fires you need to teach those who, who are walking through them. I want to tell you something. The greatest thing you have in life are those who have experience. There's people in our lives today that are the greatest resources we have. They're better than Google. Look at somebody and say, better than Google, amen? I want to I really be honest with you. I Google every single thing coming and going. Do y'all? I Google it or Fox Fire it or I, I don't even know what all, all the rest of them's called. Bing it. 
bing. Hey, how about that? I mean, we just put the information in. There it is. You know what it can do? It can tell us how to read it. It can tell us the definition of it. But it can't tell us how to make it through it. There's people in life. And Titus said, I want you to know God has put people in life to lead you through life. They've been through, heart, they've been through heartache. They know how to get you through heartache. They've dealt with sin and addictions. And they know how to get you through those when they trust in Christ as Savior and Lord. And so he said, look, I want, to, I want you to know what their church's purpose is. It is to lead others. It is to touch their lives that they may be changed forever, that the younger should learn from the older and that all should live by grace. And then he said, I want you to know about the church operation, that the church should be the minister of the gospel. Not only should we do it doing great things, and we should, not only should we be touching people's lives when there is a need, but in our lives we are to understand that everything we do is for Jesus' sake and that Jesus wants to live through us. I want you to look with me real uh, right quick in, uh, uh, in Titus chapter 3 and see what he says to the church as we go from this summary and see how God just speaks about how that part of maintaining good works. That part in our life of us, of that maintenance of walking where we need to walk with God. In our Sunday school class, we've been talking about how to be consistent with God. How to stay in that place where we need to be, uh, not up and down, but consistently walking with Him every single day. And Titus is taking this church and he said, look, I want to tell you how to maintain those things in your life, those good works uh, that will glorify God. Look in verse uh, number 8 with me, if you will. He said, this is a faithful saying and these things I will that thou can affirm consistently. He said, oh, constantly he said there. He said that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. I want to be real honest this morning. Our world needs to know things that are good and profitable. There's almost no advertisements on TV that has anything that is good and profitable. It is amazing to me to see how our world seemingly is spiraling so out of control. And it looks like it is only these temporal things that we are grasping at to try to pull them into our life to make us uh, give us a little bit of happiness for just a little bit of time. And then there's something else going to come along and we're going to put our efforts in that way. We're going to do this and we're going to do that to try to gain what only can be filled by Christ. And here's what Titus said. He said, these are the things in your life that not only will be good for your life, but also be profitable in your life. He said, I want to make you a profitable person in this world. And so he said, here's how to maintain good works. I want to tell you today, listen, all of us, that the Lord calls us to maintain those good works, that He'll be glorified and that others can see Christ through our life. Oh, I want to tell you today, the greatest thing we have in this world is when Jesus shines through us and touches somebody else's life. How I many of you are glad somebody, that God used somebody to touch your life? Amen. He said, look, Titus said, I want to show you how to maintain. That little word maintain, it means to stand before. It also means to preside. The word means to practice. It means things that are going on in your life, to abide in, to appoint, to bring, to continue, to stand in those good works. He said, look, let that be part of your life. Not only just something you do, but something you live out every single day of your life. Oh, those good works and what God can do in and through you. I love what he said in Matthew 5. Jesus talking out there in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. God wants to, through us. God wants to glorify Himself. I was thinking while they were singing that last song just a few minutes ago in the choir. Wow. Can you even believe that God, I can't even believe that He would look upon such as I was and say, I want to save you and change you and make you my child. You say, yeah, but you went to church all the time. Yeah, I did. I've also stood in a garage, but I never turned into a car. Amen? You can be in church all the time, but it does not make you saved. But if I did turn into a car, I wouldn't want it to be a Ford. Amen? <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> because I want to go somewhere, brother. Amen? Praise the Lord. Maintain good works. God said, you are my vessel. 
What if Jesus walks up to us today and said, I just want you to know, I've chosen you. Nobody else, I've just chosen you. And you have one appointment in life. That is, you get, there's somebody that I have in your, in, your, in your path of life that you're going to be the only light they will ever see. So, okay, Lord, you show me who it is. He said, no, you just walk the life. Because I'm going to touch them through you. You may not know who it is. You, might not, you may not even know they're watching you. You may not even know their name. But I want to tell you, God's going to use you. Shine that light. And Titus said, look, what you are doing, Crete, what is going on where you are, you've got to shine that light so everyone can see. Just live that life that God has put on the inside of you. He said, first of all, in verse number 1 and 2, you've got to be ready. Why, look what he said in verse number 1. He said in verse number 1, he said, Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. He said, look, come working at living every day with your tool belt on. Come to every good work. What is that tool belt? Well, first of all, he tells us how to get ready for that in Ephesians chapter number 6 when he tells us to put on the whole armor of God because we can stand against the wiles of Satan, of the devil, of evil in this world if we'll put on who God is in in our life, that we walk with Him every single day. Oh, He said be ready, by the way, to maintain uh, that relationship, to maintain good works, uh, to be ready. There's got to be a relationship. It's not just about church membership. It is great to be a church member. It is not about just doing good. It is great to do good works. But that relationship of knowing Christ in your heart, then if you died uh, today, that heaven will be your home. I did not have that until I was 17 years old. And all I did was say, Lord, I I understand who you are. I know that I'm a sinner. I want you to come into my life and save me. You died on a cross. Come into my heart. Save me. Forgive me my sin. You say, what all did that do? I'm just going to really be honest with you. That Sunday morning, when I bowed down and asked the Lord to come into my life, I didn't have a clue everything that was going to change in my life. When I was 17 years old, I didn't say, oh yeah, by the way, I'm just going to pastor Poopy's Chapel Baptist Church whenever I get older. No. The only thing I knew was, I'm lost and I'm going to go to hell if I don't know Jesus. Ask Him to save me. And then from that, it's that place of having that relationship of walking daily and letting God work in your life. And so he said, look, there's that relationship. I want to ask you today, do you have a relationship with Christ? Just not just not just saying a prayer or reading the Bible. But I'm talking about that relationship, that walking with him daily. That place in our life, that relationship. He said, oh, be ready. I I love what he says in these verses of Scripture. He said, look, I want to tell you, be subject. That means, that word subject means to have that humility in your life, to be under subjection, to obey. He said, those that are in authority, the magistrates. He said, look, I want to tell you, there's things in your life. Those are the lawmakers. He said, speak evil. Oh, look at verse number, the verse number three, or verse number one, uh, verse number two. Look at it with me, if you would. It's one, two, three, or four, five, or six. Amen. But look at two. He says, speak evil of no man. Oh, me. Oh, my. Right? God said, you want to maintain good works in your life? Understand that every single person you have ever known, ever come in contact with, that has ever lived, that God loved them as much as He loves you. Oh, no. Oh, that every, I know, I know we may not agree with what people do sometimes in our life or in the world. He said, look, speak evil of no man. Wow. He also said, by the way, that means to blaspheme. That means to defame them, to injure or to rumor. It gets real quiet when you start talking about, talking about people, don't it? Amen. He says, speak evil of no man. And then he said, there in verse number two, he said, look, to, to be no brawlers. Man. Are you sure we can't get in a fight? He said, don't be a brawler. Don't be one that that causes that fighting and that warring. He said, by the way, whenever you see see about being peaceful, you go all the way back to Jesus talking on the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, he said, hey, you're to be a peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemakers. Amen? We can go on in this whole list. It just goes on and on and on. He said, look, be gentle, showing kindness unto all men. Wow. Probably a good place just to give an altar call, wouldn't it? God said, look, here's, here's what he's simply saying. We're to have a Christ-like spirit in every area of our life. 
How do you do that? It's by the Holy Spirit living in us. I want to tell you, when you go through these scriptures, he said, there's the ruin. I want you to look at it with me in verse number 3. Verse number 3, he said, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. We could probably just all put an amen right there. He said, he said we were sometimes, we were disobedient. He said we were deceived. Wow. He said we was also, we were serving diverse lust and pleasures. We're trying to fill our life with things in this world. Living in malice and envy and hateful and hating one another. I love this verse of Scripture. He said, preacher, why in the world would you? Look what he said. We were. <laughs> that means that things have changed. Here's what he said in 1 Corinthians 6, verse, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. I want to tell you, he changed our lives, amen? He said you were. I want to tell you, we were in ruin, but also there's that redemption. But these verses of Scripture 4 to 7 simply tells us about how he came and redeemed our lives. I love the first part of that verse. Look at it in verse number 4. But after that. <laughs> All that junk was in their life in verse number 3. He said, but after that, you have love, you have kindness. And he goes down this whole list. You have mercy, you have grace. Uh, you have all, you are, you are washed. Uh, you are made clean. You are, you have an abundant life. You are justified. Oh, I love, look at verse number five. He said, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. God said, I want to tell you what, I'm the one who changes your life. <laughs> How many of you glad today? Praise God. He redeemed you. Amen. The very last thing, I want you to look at it with me in verse number eight and nine. He said, here's your reward. He said, this is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou confirm constantly. He said, look, I want to tell you something. He said, it's a life that you live every single day. It's not a forceful life. You don't just have to live it. Oh, no, I've got to live this Christian life. It's a life that is lived from the inside out, the Holy Spirit guiding us, empowering us, leading us through. He said, I want to tell you, these things make it good and profitable. God wants our life today to be, crop, be, be profitable. Amen? That concrete foundation for faith life is walking with Him, serving Him, saying, Lord, here I am. That place of being consistent, of constantly walking with Him. He said, it's good and profitable. <laughs> I want to tell you, the best life you've ever had is living for Jesus. He says it this, Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. He said, we're to meditate on His Word. He said, I want to tell you what, it, it'll make you successful. It'll make you prosperous in life. The first thing that happens sometimes when we talk about being prosperous or profitable in life, people think about money. I'm going to tell you, it goes way beyond any of that. Some of the most miserable people in the world are people that really have a lot of riches and nothing on the inside that changes them. God wants to give us that life, amen? Maintain good works. He wants to do something in our lives today by us saying, Lord, here I am. I don't know what you may need. Listen, it may be in your life today, you have been up and down in your life. You've been in that place, it's like, do I really know? Am I, am I saved? Do I know Jesus as my Savior? Is He alive in my life? Has He really changed my life? Is it that place where I'm up and down? Is that place where, you know, sometimes I'm living for the Lord, sometimes I'm not. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen? Titus said, I want to tell you what, your life can be consistent. You can have a life that is filled with joy. Peter says it like this. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. God is good. Let's, let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for how you are speaking into our lives right now. God, there's some of us can't maintain that good works because you are not living in us. God, you said in the book of Romans chapter 3 and verse number 10 that there's none righteous, no, not one. God, you said that there's no good in us in ourselves, but Lord, it's in you. And God, what you want to do through us. And Lord, right now, together, God, we just want to pray that you will speak to all of our lives. Lord, help us. God, there's some today that are facing battles that no one else even knows about. Lord, I pray right now, God, that we would understand that you and you alone are able to help us to maintain those good works, to take whatever it is and wherever we are, God. And let you be profitable through where we are. Father, help us to commit it to you and follow you. God, thank you for all that you're doing in and through us today, right now. God, together we praise you. 
Lord, you know how you are speaking to us. Help us just to respond in faith. Give you praise in Jesus' name. Heads bowed and eyes closed for just a minute. I'm going to ask you, if you will, if you're physically able, let's just stand together. Our heads bowed and eyes closed. You just pray for yourself. Pray for your neighbor. Lord, what are you saying to me today? God, what are you saying to my neighbor today, Lord, right here that I'm standing beside of? God, what do you want to say to us? How do we need to respond to you, Lord? What are you saying? I want to ask you, first of all, listen, if you know Jesus as your Savior, today you may be struggling with some things, and you may say, God, I need some strength for my Christian life. Lord, I need you to help me to maintain those things that you want in my life. God, I want your path. You have somebody in my path, somebody on my road, God, that I'm supposed to be a light to. Lord, I want to commit to you because I want you to work through me. God, I want to be faithful to you. Listen, would you come today and say, God, here I am, Lord. I want you to work in me. I want you to work through me. Satan is trying to deal in my life. Satan is trying to, man, sin is beating at my door and trying to tempt me and keep me from being who I need to be. God, I want to be faithful to you. Listen, while these are coming, while God is just speaking to you this morning, you say, you know something, in my life today, listen, I'm battling some things personally in my life. I need God to help me. Listen, I want to tell you, there's not an addiction that's stronger than the presence and power of God, no matter what it is. Listen, I want to tell you, you can maintain those good works. You can let God work in and through you to be that light that will glorify Him. You say, this morning, Pastor, I just need to come. There's some things I need to pray about. Listen, maybe this morning, some of you, while you're sitting here reading that scripture in First uh, in Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 11, listen, some, are, some of us, maybe today we just need to come and say, God, I just want to thank you that you changed my life. God, I just need to come and humbly bow before you, Lord, in praise and adoration that you changed me. God, help me to live that life that will glorify you. God, you are so good to me. Listen, some of you today, God's rescued you. God's changed your whole family. Your whole life. Glory to God. Hey, be a good time to just say, God, I want to praise you for it. Some of you may have a mother you need to pray for. Yes, and I don't know the Lord. But you might need to just come and say, God, I want you to work in their life. Like, Titus was there to help them to maintain, to step in that discipleship and be who God wanted them to be. That, that light could shine. Today, oh, you're standing here, you're saying, oh, I'm just in that place of decision. I'm not sure today if I died, I'd really go. If I know I'd go to heaven or hell, I really don't know. Friend, I want to tell you, God knows and God loves you and God wants you to know. He said, these things have I written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life. God's give us His Word. He said, if you'll follow my Word. You may need to come today while these are coming and while God's just speaking. You say this morning, Pastor, in my life, I just need to come. I want God to show me. I want to know without a doubt that I know Jesus is my Savior and Lord. I want to know Him. I want to know that I know Christ. Hallelujah. Because I want to tell you, He can change and will change your life forever. Praise His name. He said, I need to come this morning. I need Christ in my life. Say today, preacher, really, I really don't know, but I want to be honest in my life today. I'm really not sure I'm saved, but just, just pray for me. I'm not sure that I really know Christ. I know about His Word. I know things about, about Him, but I'm really not sure that I know Him today. Pray for me. Would you just slip your hand up? I'm just concerned about my own life. Just pray for me. I'm really not sure that I know Christ in my life. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty with the Lord. Say so this morning, preacher, in my life today as a Christian, while I'm dealing with things that's kind of up and down in my life, I need God to help me. Well, I want to maintain those things. I want to maintain those good works to glorify God. Would you just slip up your hand today? I just want you to help me pray about it. God bless your hearts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for hearing from the Lord this morning. Maybe today you just say, you know something, just in a word of a, a lift of my hand of praise. I just want to thank God for what He's done in my life that He I, I was, I used to be, but now, praise God, I'm clean. I've been made whole. He saved me by His mercy. You might just need to lift your hand and praise the Lord. I oh, are just in prayer to Him. God, thank you for saving me. Thank you for being so good. Oh, He's so good today. Bless His name. Today, as you may say, you know something, I have somebody special on my heart this morning. I just want you to help me pray for them. Would you just slip your hand up? I just got somebody on my heart today. and I was, Oh, He is so good. Let's pray together. Father, thank You for loving us. Thank You for the opportunity You give us today to know You, to trust You. God, to be saved, and Lord, to know that you care about us, Lord. God, you know everything about us. Father, I pray with those right now that do not have that assurance in their life, that they know you as Savior and Lord. God, before they leave this place, Lord, help us to be able to, to, to give them that assurance by the Word, God, of what you want to do and who, what you can do in their lives. God, I just ask you right now that you, Lord, would just, uh, God, you'd speak to them and help them to commit to you, Lord, that they know that they're a sinner according to your Word that you died on the cross and you rose again. 
Lord, if they can trust you, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God, thank you for making it so simple. I pray with these right now that we have on our heart, God, that you would just open their eyes and their hearts, God, that they would trust in you, God. Lord, that they would, you would do a work in their lives. God, we just commit to you. I pray with these that are struggling right now with things in our lives, God, that you would set us free and help us, God, just to follow you with everything that we have. We give you praise today, Lord, on this wonderful Mother's Day, God, for all of our, our mothers here at church, God, those also who have gone on in the Lord, God, we want to thank you for them. Those who have left that path, God, that we can see and know, God, that of your light shining in our lives. Help us to be that same light to someone in our path. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. I praise the Lord and give God thanksgiving. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord uh, this morning. And uh, we're going to be dismissing right here in just a minute. I'm going to ask those who are going to be working outside. Uh, we need some of our, uh, uh, our workers out here that's going to be helping sign people up for Friday night. They'll be sitting at the table. So uh, please uh, take advantage of that. Sign up today. So thank you so much. I want to tell all of you something. I love all of you. God is good to us. Amen. Amen. And thank Him for allowing us to be in His house. Uh, we're going to dismiss in a word of prayer. Before we do, I need every... We're, we're not going to come up here and meet today. Uh, all the youth and youth parents like we've been doing. We're, I know everybody's going Mother's Day. And uh, we're going to have a great time with uh, uh, celebrating today. We will not be having service tonight. We will be having it Wednesday night. But if you are planning to go to youth camp, or some of our youth are planning to ask somebody to take with them to youth camp, I need to know before 12 o'clock tonight okay so uh you get on the phone you chat what i said get on the phone they don't never use a phone snap it flip it whatever you got to do to it give me that information you can, you can all the way to 12 o'clock i'm going to take that information we got to make a deposit tomorrow for everyone going so i i need to know today so thank you for that and uh, thank you all for working so hard yesterday uh, at the Butterfly Festival. Brother Jerry, I'm going to ask you if you'll come up here and dismiss in a word of prayer, brother. And uh, thank God for his goodness. And uh, welcome to me to be at, their, at the door. And I just want to tell all of you I love you. Happy Mother's Day. All of our wonderful mothers here, thank you for how you lead your children to know the Lord. What a blessing. Amen. And uh, we give God thanksgiving. Let's pray together. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the Word of God. We thank you for the book of Titus, Lord, that it reminds us Oh, to be, have those good works in our life. That other people might see the love of God that's in our heart and might want what we have, Lord. We pray for those that leave here today, Lord, that don't have assurance in their heart. I pray you would speak to them. I pray, God, that the love of God would overwhelm them this day. And they would come to the knowledge of the truth and know that Jesus died for their sin and accept it in their heart by faith through the grace that He's given us. Thank you for the good word of God, Lord. We pray you be with us as we go uh, to visit our mothers and be with our mothers today. We thank you for them. We just praise you for all that you do for us. And thank you again for the good word of God, Lord, that helps us to remind us in our hearts to maintain good works. We praise you. We worship you. Keep us safe and bring us back at that appointed time. And we do love you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to give you a quick reminder as you go out. Our youth are selling pucker powder. Whatever that is. So come get you some. We got to get it all out today. So. <laughs>